Hello there to anyone who watches this video. Um, I'm going to start uh, making some uh, videos now and again with uh, some uh, historic stuff um, in them. Um, I'm a big history buff and uh, want to list uh, you know some of the uh, great outdoorsmen or people who were like true like survivalists um, throughout American history. Um, I recently uh, took a trip down to the uh, Williamsburg, um, Virginia area with my family, and uh, right uh, right there in Williamsburg, uh, it's called uh, America's Historic Triangle because you have uh, Williamsburg there, you have Jamestown, and you have Yorktown. Um, if you are unfamiliar with those places, uh, look them up and see why they matter in our history. Um, but uh, I'm going to start this uh, series with um, Jamestown and specifically Captain John Smith. Although he was an Englishman, not like a true United States of America fellow, he laid the foundations for things that uh, the United States of America would become. He was like one of the first white folk in Virginia, um, the first Europeans, um, the Spanish, uh, the Spanish stopped by, um, a few years before and, um, took some, I think they, uh, they, they stopped in, in shore a little bit and, and passing, um, I believe, but, uh, they, they didn't, the Spanish didn't settle there. They were much further south in the, you know, the central and South America and some of the Caribbean. Um, a little bit in Florida. We all know, um, well, maybe we don't all know, but uh, St. Augustine, Florida is, uh, I think, the, the oldest city in the United States of America. It was a Spanish city from, from way, way back. But the beginnings of the United States of Virginia, uh, ha, the United States of Virginia, United States of America started in uh, what's now Virginia. And uh, these folks um, from England named it Virginia after uh, the Virgin Queen, Queen Elizabeth. And uh, they came to uh, over a hundred guys, including John Smith, came to America in 1607, and uh, named um, their little settlement there after the current king, James the First, called it Jamestown, and uh, they really um, had to uh, fight for their lives there. Turn around and show you the uh, back of my shirt. Hopefully, it's in the frame there. It says. Uh, you know, Jamestown, 1607, when survival was not a game. Um, so, Captain John Smith, very instrumental guy in um, this uh, survival story and exploration. So, uh, I'm going to roll some uh, footage and uh, do a little voiceover. Um, the footage uh, taken inside uh, the original uh, location of the Jamestown Fort. So, hope you hope you enjoy a little little um, history lesson here on a super cool guy, John Smith. All right, we're going to give some uh, footage of uh, the original uh, Jamestown location here and tell you a little bit about John Smith while you get some uh, viewing pleasure. John Smith was born about 1580 over in England to um, a farmer. His dad was a farmer, which was a uh, lower class in a very class-centric society. Um, John Smith wanted to get out of that and better himself, um, but he couldn't because his dad wanted him to be a farmer. But then when John was 15, his dad passed away, and John went off to um, the Netherlands, what, what is now the Netherlands, Holland, to uh, fight in a war there to fight, in, fight for uh, independence from Spain. Then he um, returned home to England and immersed himself in the study of warfare and manliness. Um, John then uh, went off to war again, doing uh, you know, mercenary st stuff um, over in uh, what's now the um, country of Romania, and fought in a war there against the Turkish Empire of the Ottomans. Um, he was captured and made into a slave, but John Smith didn't stay a slave. What did he do? One of his slave buddies told him he will never escape. So John Smith killed his captors, escaped, and made his way back to England, where he hooked up with the Virginia Company and 
was going to take part in a new English settlement in the New World. In uh, December 1607, um, three ships set sail from England to go to Virginia. Um, John Smith uh, actually became a prisoner on board these ships during the oh, five or six month journey it took to get them from England to what is now Virginia. Um, the uh, upper class gentleman um, society did not care much for John Smith as he was a commoner. Um, when uh, these ships uh, pulled up into the Chesapeake Bay and into Virginia, they opened a box from their bosses at the Virginia Company and saw that John Smith was actually supposed to be one of the leaders of the new settlement. Um, and he was uh, eventually cleared of all um, crimes or so that he was in prison for on the ship. Um, the first man in charge of Jamestown, Edward, Edward Maria Wingfield, um, he did not even want to fortify um, their settlement and kept all their weapons on board to give a friendly outlook on the uh, Indians there. Uh, John Smith didn't really like that. And attacks from the, uh, the Powhatan people um, started pretty much right away. Um, there was a, a fella who uh, went right outside the encampment to uh, take a poop and he took an arrow to the brain instead. Um, so some other attacks later, you know, they fortified, they made the Jamestown fort and you can see some reconstructed walls and stuff. That's uh, the original outline of the fort. Um, the arche archeologists found that back in the 1990s. Um, so John Smith, uh, man, he, he knew his stuff from all that studying and stuff he did back in England and fighting wars throughout Europe. He knew what was what. Um, so he, he took uh, a leadership role in the community as a member of the council and really uh, became a pest to that uh, gentleman class. Um, so John Smith, um, he was a soldier and an explorer. So he did a lot of exploring of the outside area and started to build relationships with um, the Powhatan people there. Um, eventually including um, Chief Powhatan himself, who was an emperor, you know, um, all up and down the Virginia coast along the Chesapeake, you know, thousands and thousands of people um, Chief Powhatan was the ruler of. Um, so, so John Smith um, would be out and about trading goods for uh, food like corn and stuff uh, with the Indians um, because the Jamestown settlement struggled. They, they got off the shores in May of 1607 and, you know, had fresh water to drink there from the James River. Um, that situation quickly changed. Um, the, during the summer, the James River becomes too salty from uh, the Chesapeake Bay. Um, the water, it, it just makes you sick from uh, the salt. Uh, so they had to... Um, find other the uh, gentleman society was very lazy they uh they came to the new world in a, a get rich quick scheme um looking for gold which there ended up not being any gold uh, so john smith was uh taking trade goods around the the english had brought a lot of um like copper kettles and uh things like hammers and axes hatchets you know, metal tools that the Indians didn't have. They were they were Stone Age people. Uh, so he was eventually captured. Um, I believe in um, well, well, let's let's step back. He he was doing this stuff, and people were getting sick. People at Jamestown were getting sick uh, throughout that whole summer. A um, hundred and five people landed in May. Um, half of them died by the end of the summer. They got sick. Um, you saw the swampiness around there. It was full of mosquitoes um, and other, other things. Not too many died from attacks from uh, the Powhatan people. Um, that wasn't an issue. They died of disease. Even um, council member um, and, and explorer Bartholomew Gosnold 
Um, you saw his grave in the um, video overlay earlier. He was um, an explorer, um, gentleman class guy, but he was a, he was a worker. He uh, he went to uh, the coast of New England and found uh, Massachusetts and stuff up there and named Martha's Vineyard after his daughter, I believe, daughter or wife, uh, one of his um, immediate family. And, you know, hundreds of years later, Martha's Vineyard is still there today. Um, so, but anyway, he passed away and, you know, the fall was coming up and these guys needed food. They couldn't plant crops or hunt for crap. Um, so John Smith um, took over um, this type of stuff uh, with his relations with uh, the native peoples and got the Jamestown colony some corn, um, maybe did a little extortion with some of the uh, local tribes to, to pay tribute and corn for them or they get blasted away by the English's guns and cannons. Uh, eventually, John Smith was captured um, during an uh, early winter, um, late I think late December of uh, 1607. And he was a prisoner of the Powhatan people for six weeks or so, um, and living uh, pretty comfortably uh, while he was a prisoner. Um, paraded around through all the different uh, Powhatan villages along the, uh, the uh, Virginia coast there. Eventually, he came to the big Powhatan capital, Werowocomoco, where Chief Powhatan lived. And he was to be put to death. But, as you may know, Chief Powhatan's daughter, Pocahontas, jumped in and saved him from meeting a grisly death by getting his brains beaten in by a war club. Uh, the story is true. It's not just in movies, although the story of John Smith and Pocahontas being in love is total crap. It's nonsense. He was about 27 or so when, um, in Jamestown, and she was probably 10, 11 year old little girl. Most historians uh, think that she probably had a, a crush on him, maybe. Um, you know, different looking fella, nice, uh, handsome redhead with a beard, if that uh, sounds familiar. Um, we're uh, we're pretty good looking guys, us bearded red headed fellows. Um, hard to resist. There's um, and and he he was allowed to return to Jamestown. Um, and uh, the scene upon his return wasn't wasn't too good. Um, these these gentlemen folks that were the the bulk of uh, Jamestown citizens, uh, they weren't doing much. They didn't even build houses. They're all living in tents. You know, it's the middle of winter. It gets cold in Virginia. Not uh, not Canada cold, but it gets pretty cold. Um, but anyway, John Smith survives the winter. Doesn't starve to death. Doesn't get uh, sick and die. Although uh, he was ill back in the summer when uh, many other people were sick and died. Uh, during uh, 1608... John Smith uh, takes a small little boat and about a dozen other guys to go exploring. And he's gone for a long time exploring the Chesapeake Bay as well as drawing a map of the whole place. And uh, it's pretty... The map is around that he he drew, um, at least photographs of it. I would assume the real one's around somewhere. But it's pretty ornate, um, pretty cool looking, that he was able to draw this map from floating around in a little boat with a dozen other fellas, you know, living it up, exploring, hunting, fishing. Um, they would be, uh, sometimes they would find so much fish, they just took one of their swords and stabbed it down into the water from over the sides of their boat and caught fish. Now, during the act, when they were doing that, John Smith stabbed into this uh, flat type of fish, which uh, ended up having a really long tail with a spike on the end that stung John Smith in the arm. Uh, his arm swelled up so bad from the poison of this stingray, as we now know them, uh, 
swelled up to twice the size of what uh, his arm normally was. And all these other guys on this trip thought he was going to die. He, uh, John Smith picked out this little island um, either in one of the rivers or along the, the bay there and had his buddies uh, dig his grave for him. But uh, John Smith was smart. He picked this crew for this little ship to go on this exploration very carefully. And one of the people he picked was a doctor. And the doctor rubbed uh, an ointment on his arm where he was stung that eventually brought the swelling down and he was back to normal. And what does a um, badass kind of guy like John Smith do after he's all better from getting stung by some little fishy animal? Well, he eats that damn thing for dinner. That's right. That's right. John Smith took that stingray that stung him and cooked it over the fire. Who had the last laugh there? Mr. John Smith. Captain John Smith. Not the stingray. Um, eventually, um, in 1608, um, John Smith actually becomes the governor of the Jamestown settlement. And he does more for the settlement than the previous governors have in the past, you know, over a year's time by that, that point. And, um, the governors were appointed to a one year term. Um, the first guy that I mentioned earlier, uh, Wingfield, he got, he got kicked out. Um, he did a terrible job. Guys like John Smith and, um, John Ratcliffe, um, kind of forced him into resignation. Um, you, may recognize the name Ratcliffe uh, from the Disney version of uh, the Jamestown story in the movie Pocahontas. He was actually a real person and was in charge of the Jamestown settlement for a time. Um, he was uh, pretty terrible in real life too. John Smith did not get along with him at all. Um, but this video isn't about Ratcliffe, although if you hated him in the Disney movie, you will be pleased to know that he met a miserable end with the Powhatan people. They skinned him alive with oyster shells and watched. He, they made him watch as they threw pieces of skin into the fire and then eventually burned him alive. So... If you like to know how movie bad guys met their end in real life, there you go. Um, but anyway, John Smith, governor of Jamestown from 1608 to 16, uh, fall, fall of 1608 to 1609. Um, John Smith made sure that uh, they got a lot of food storage for that winter um, as it was going to be a rough one. And then uh, he made his famous statement that he... Who will not work will not eat that uh, kicked into high gear some of these gentleman class guys who sat around being lazy um, still worrying about the prospects of finding gold in the new world um, John Smith thought there could be still could be riches found in the new world just not from gold as others thought so John Smith uh, continued his relationship um, and good uh, trading status with the uh, Powhatan people. And um, he was in a, a lodge in uh, one of Powhatan's villages. Um, and uh, Chief Powhatan was a, a crafty fella. He tried to kind of trick the English, uh, but they, they were usually on to his ways. Um, he tried to trick him into, oh, just uh, lay down your weapons for a little bit. Put them over here. It's all safe and dandy. When really, uh, he was trying to trick them so he could kill them. Um, he tried doing this uh, on a wintry night when um, John Smith and crew were in uh, one of his, in his um, village there. And they were all in a lodge. And uh, little Pocahontas comes into the lodge in the, in the, at nighttime in the bitter cold of winter. And risks her own life doing this, by the way, because she would have um, probably been executed if um, her dad knew that um, she was warning his enemies that uh, he was coming for them. But Pocahontas um, warned John Smith that uh, he and his men were going to be killed by his by her father's men. So they um, 
they kind of hightailed it out of there. Um, there was a, another attempt on uh, John Smith's life uh, from a, a brother of Chief Powhatan while they were going to trade. Um, John Smith was in the, one of the uh, homes of uh, this uh, other chief, brother of Powhatan, uh, Opakatha Canoe. I don't know if I say that right, but that's kind of what it looks like in the book. <laughs> Opakatha Canoe. Uh, the uh, John Smith heard a, you know noises outside. Maybe his men warned him that uh, Indian warriors were gathering up out there to uh, take his life. So what does John Smith do? He grabs Opakatha Canoe by the hair and shoves a pistol in his chest. And uses him as a shield to get out and back to his boat. Now that is, that's pretty badass. Um, grabbing a guy, he he would have been a strong guy. You don't get to be an Indian chief by being some old fart loafer. Um, even Powhatan at this period was in his sixties or seventies, and he is said to have been in immaculate physical condition, especially for someone his age. He was a tough guy, so his brother was probably a tough guy too. Um, but John Smith yanked him by the long hair, pointed his pistol right in his chest and pushed him out through the door and made his way safely back to Jamestown. Um, there was a uh, new arrivals of new settlers in Jamestown from time to time. And, you know, more people, they, they didn't like John Smith because he was a realist. He knew there was no gold in Virginia by this point. He uh, he wanted people to work. He wanted people to um, use the resources that were there in Virginia um, to help the Virginia company over in England profit, um, such as you know lumber. You could sell all these nice cedar trees here in Virginia for uh, profit over in England. Um, you could start big fishing industries. Chesapeake Bay is full of all kinds of fish, he would tell them. Um, but... Uh, that gentleman class were still set on finding gold. They did not like John Smith. But I don't know. They just didn't they just didn't see the big picture. John Smith saw the big picture of what this strange land, this new land of Virginia could become. Um eventually John Smith was out on another exploration. Um in a boat um, where there ended up being an accident. If you know anything about the firearms of the period, um, they were called uh, matchlock rifles, um, not even flintlocks um, at this point in time. Um, they, they may have been invented, but uh, common folk uh, didn't have flintlocks yet. They had matchlocks. Um, they were fired by a piece of rope that was a lit and the when you pulled the trigger on the gun that piece of rope dropped into a flash pan of powder and ignited the rest of the charge and fired your weapon um so they they had um gunpowder around um guys t typically wore some type of bandolier you know different uh, uh cases of um powder charges and john smith was out on a boat um taking a nap um, during an exploration and mysteriously kind of um, powder charges exploded and he was injured pretty bad. Um, and he had to make his way back to England. Um, this was in the fall of 1609. His one year term of governor was uh, coming to an end or had just ended. Um, and these gentlemen uh, folks um, were glad to get rid of him. Um, I believe um, I believe uh, Ratcliffe was still around at this point. Um, another guy who is uh, one of the original settlers, Gabriel Archer. Um, he did not like John Smith. Um, another guy, George Percy, um, one of the original settlers from 1607, who uh, who did a lot of writing, and that's how we know him. Um, a lot of Jamestown history from George Percy. Um, I'm not, he didn't seem to dislike Smith too much, I don't think, from uh, what I remember. But uh, Archer, yeah, he didn't like him. Um, so John Smith was uh, 
went back to England. And uh, as soon as he left, if you remember from uh, history class or if you heard before, um, the Jamestown settlement in the winter of 1609-1610 went into a period called the Starving Time. John Smith was solely responsible for the for feeding this colony, and with him gone, they starved. There were over 500 people in the colony at this point. There were 70 when springtime came. They died. They starved to death, long, painful death. Um, without John Smith, they were nothing. Um, the people that survived, like George Percy, he eight people that died they have a skull at jamestown of a girl um i think they call her hannah um this girl they 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 know she was cannibalized because of um cut marks on her skull she was eaten by guys like george percy um gabriel archer who i mentioned earlier he died during this period um so maybe maybe he was eaten too you never know Nah, we do know. He he wasn't eaten. He was important. And he was buried in um, the church um, they had in Jamestown. Um, you saw some outline of the uh, church there. There were four people buried in the, the original church there in Jamestown. Gabriel Archer was one of them. But, uh, yeah, they were nothing without John Smith. Um, the previous winter, he had split up the colony and sent them to different locations um, throughout the area so they could try to fend for themselves, and thrive a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, so to resonate my point again, you know, Jamestown was nothing without John Smith. Um, sort of. I mean, obviously the colony survived, and we have Virginia and the United States today, but in those early days, man, John Smith was where it was at. Very brave man. He knew what he was doing. He, he saw the necessity of being involved with the native peoples of Virginia um, in order for the colony to survive. And uh, eventually the rest of the crew, the gentleman class, caught on and knew that Smith was right. When Smith was back in England, um, he published um, a bunch of bunch of works, his journals and um, history of the Virginia colony. Uh, you can still read that stuff today. It's great stuff. That's where a lot of information comes from. Um, Definitely check out the book. It's called um, Love and Hate in Jamestown. Um, the story of John Smith and Pocahontas. I think the author's name is David Price. Um, maybe I should check. The last name is definitely Price. You can find it on Amazon. Great book. It's not too long. Only a couple hundred pages. Um, great history of the early days of the Jamestown colony. Uh, you can read a lot of the stories that I shared in this video in that book. Um, great, great stuff. It's action packed, man. John Smith is, is portrayed as being super cool in that book. Um, I need to read his actual writings as well. Maybe I'll pick that up at some point. Uh, but anyway, John Smith, he, he's the original American outdoorsman and survival guy. He, he did it all in, in the, the two years that he spent in Virginia. After he went back to England um, because of that uh, gunpowder burn that he sustained, he, he never came back to Virginia. Um, he did do some additional exploration um, in, uh, off the coast of New England and did some mapping up there. Um, he gave New England the name New England. Um, that was John Smith. Um, Eventually, the uh, pilgrims used his maps um, when uh, they came over to the New World and uh, made their home in Massachusetts. Um, John Smith, his attitude, his map work, his exploration have absolutely made a lasting impact into uh, what is now the United States of America. Highly encourage everybody to take a trip down to uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. Um, where you can visit that original Jamestown fort. It was, it was thought lost um, into uh, the James River due to uh, erosion, you know, natural causes. Um, but it was discovered in 1994 uh, by a guy, archaeologist Dr. Kelso, found um, the original Jamestown fort, postmarks from the, the palisade wall there, 
just about the 16 inches under the soil that was there. Pretty cool. And they, um, I think uh, part of the uh, south wall is that would have been there in 1607, 1608 when John Smith was there. That's that's now out in the river, but most of it is saved. Um, there's a uh, flood wall and stuff there that's kept the river back from eroding further. Um, definitely a cool place to visit. You can see um, a bunch of grave markers that are there. There's got to be hundreds of others, you know, outside of the fort in the general area there. Um, definitely visit Jamestown, learn about Captain John Smith and all the great things he did and really influenced, you know, the attitude of the, the men who made America great. Um, he was the first one, the first English white guy anyway. <laughs> uh, but the, you know, that's, that's what America became and an English settlement of, uh, you know, people and, uh, you know, we won, the United States won their independence from England, not the, not the Pauhans, not the Spanish from England. You know, John Smith, look him up, read, do some additional reading. There's so many stories, even though this video is really long, there's so much that I, I wasn't able to share. I didn't even want this video to be this long, but it's impossible to keep it short. It's impossible. But anyways, take care, everyone. Go do some additional reading about John Smith, even if it's just the Wikipedia page about him. Check him out. Super cool character. Um, definitely an admirable guy. Um, sorry this video went so long. It's probably a bit boring just staring at that statue this whole time. But anyways, great American outdoorsman. Very OG one, Captain John Smith.